Hello everyone, welcome to moreveggiesmom.com. Thank you so much for watching. Um, my goal here is to really help parents get their kids to eat more vegetables and have a healthier lifestyle. So to get the word out, please, please, please like me on Facebook, visit my website, suggest it to friends, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, that will really help to get my website out there and help other parents to have these awesome recipes and um, cooking skills that I'm showing. So today we are making a recipe for all you cheese lovers out there. It is cauliflower stuffed shells. This is actually a pretty simple recipe, considering how complicated it looks. <laughs> so I started by making one batch of spaghetti sauce, and the recipe for that is already on the website. Um, it's super simple spaghetti sauce, and I have the video if you need it, and the printable recipe. So go ahead and make that ahead of time, um, or while you're cooking everything else. I have a large pot of water here that I'm going to turn on to high heat so that it will come up to a boil. And I have chopped a head of cauliflower and put it into a steamer. We're going to be pureeing this, so we're going to put it in a food processor and mash it all up. And it will. you want it to come to about three to four cups mashed. If you don't, If you don't have a steamer, that's okay. You can just get a pot and put about a half of an inch of water in there and then put your cauliflower in it and cover it. Um, that way the steam will stay in and cook it. You may want to check it halfway through, uh, give it a stir, make sure that it's not um, going brown on the bottom um, and that you have enough water in there to create the steam that you need. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start this. So I'm gonna put it on 20 minutes and I'll check it part way through and we'll see if it's good to go. Then I have a regular size pan here and I'm gonna turn this on to a medium high heat and I'm going to brown and crumble one pound of Italian sausage. For this recipe, I like to have larger pieces. I don't want to want it completely crumbled like uh, like taco meat, but I want bigger chunks. All right, so that took about three minutes. You need to stir it pretty constantly to keep it from burning. If you need to, you can turn the heat down a bit. I just like to cook things quickly. I'm not very patient. <laughs> so. Here is one way that you can drain your fat. I move my meat off to one side and I press the fat out. And then I take some folded paper towels and place them in there and use my spatula or my, yeah, my spatula to press this down and sop it all up. So that sausage is finished and my water has come to a boil. So I have a 12 ounce box of jumbo sized shells. And these are the jumbo shells and they get even bigger when you cook them. But I'm just gonna toss these in here. And cook them according to the, the directions on the box. My cauliflower is done. It took the full 20 minutes and I could even cook it a little bit longer if I wanted to um, because I cut mine so big. The smaller you cut it, the less time it takes to cook. Um, now these are really hot and if you have the patience for it, wait for them to cool off, but I don't. <laughs> so I'm just going to get these into my food processor. And all mine won't fit. Oh, and you know what I just thought of? You can actually rinse these off in cold water. That'll cool them down more quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna puree what I've got and then add more if I need it. And it does 
doesn't look like I will. Okay. If you're pureeing, if you're using hot food in a food processor, be really careful with the steam and the pressure that can build up. All right, so I have this large bowl and I put my sausage in there. Now I'm gonna add three to four cups of my cauliflower. And up to one cup of cottage cheese. So you want four cups total. So if you're doing four cups of cauliflower, you don't need to do any cottage cheese. But I am only going to get three cups out of this, and I'm happy with that. And I will put one cup of cottage cheese in the bowl as well. Okay, so I have checked these. You want them to have a little bit of a bite. It's called el dente which is a fancy Italian word for with a bite. <laughs> so I'll get those turned off. I'll put them through a colander and rinse them with cool water. After I've rinsed mine, I just like to set the colander right on the pot like that so that the water can drip off into it. And I've got an eight ounce package of mozzarella cheese that I'm gonna add to this. I also have some Parmesan cheese. Um, I'm going to do about a, a half of a cup on this. You can use the other kind of cheese, the other kind of Parmesan, the crumbly craft kind. Um, it's not going to make a difference in this. I'm going to stir this up a little bit and encourage that cauliflower to cool off before I add two eggs. So when you add egg to anything, you always want to put it into a separate container. So I am just using the one cup measuring cup that I was using before for my cottage cheese and cauliflower. Because why do more dishes? So the reason we do this is because if one of the eggs is bad, you don't want to have to throw away everything in here. Neither one is, so I'll go ahead and toss them in there and wash my hands. Now I'm just going to add a dash or two of cayenne pepper. There should be enough salt in here with the cheese and the sausage. Also there's cheese, I mean salt, in your sauce. So you shouldn't need to add any, but it's, it's to your liking. So if you want more salt, you may add more salt. That was all pretty easy, right? Now we get to assemble, like the Avengers. We're gonna take about three-fourths of a cup and stick it in a dish, in a, <laughs> in a dish, in a casserole dish, in a large one. Now I always end up filling um, a large one and a small one with this. So in the small one, I put half of a cup of the sauce. Then I will take my shells and keep them open like that. I kind of cup them in my hand. Instead of doing it this way, I turn them and I pinch them so that they hold open. And actually, this is easier to do with a spoon. So you just take a spoon and you fill it, you can fill it quite full, and just stick it in there. And you're going to do that all the way around and they can be touching, that's fine. All right, so now we are just going to cover these with sauce. Now you probably won't use all of your noodles, I never do. 
Um, but it's good to have the extra because sometimes they break and then if you didn't make enough then you won't have extras for the bro to take care of the broken ones, to replace the broken ones. Um, also, it would be really good if you could find a whole wheat pasta shells. I can never find them, but they are a healthier option for you and your kids. I'm just kind of try to spread this sauce around a bit. Okay, I had a technical glitch, but um, I put Parmesan cheese on top to make it look nicer. I could have also used mar um, mozzarella, but I ran out. <laughs> so I'm just going to cover these with foil, and you can either put them into your preheated oven or into the fridge and cook them later. So here is a picture of some stuffed shells courtesy of Google. I got really busy that night and wasn't able to take a picture, but... If you, like me, um, made your pasta shells earlier in the day and put them in the fridge, make sure you take them out of the fridge about an hour before you want to eat. Let them sit on the counter for a half an hour and then put them into the oven at 400 degrees for 25 to 35 minutes. If you, they are just going directly into the oven, um, it's the same cooking time at the same temperature. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy.